Hello everybody and welcome back to the Mechanical Channel and welcome to the latest instalment of the Rialto Returns. I'd like to start this video with a bit of an apology. I'm very sorry it's taken me this long to do a video specifically on the Rialto Blackburn. There is a reason for that and hopefully by the end of the video you'll understand why and more importantly what we've been doing to it because the plan keeps changing, it keeps evolving as these things do with budget and all these kind of things. But more importantly, the more perceptive of you may have realised by now that the console appears to be sitting a bit taller than usual. Why is that? Well it's now on a platform which I'm very lucky to have the reason for it being on a platform is, when it was on the floor, I couldn't get behind the console to do any work inside it. All the outside shell is pretty much done now. Obviously the manuals have changed, that's more on that later. But the, outside, the actual paintwork and the shell of the console is pretty much finished. It's now about wiring. Now that's very difficult if you can't get in the back of it. it. It became quite difficult to get up after I'd been on night shift, pull the console out, literally drag it forward, maybe tag three wires on before having to push it back and carry on with my day. So I've decided it needed to go on some wheels. So I went down to Bilson Town Hall where the Cannock Chase Organ Club are installing the new organ there. And they said to me, we've got Gaumont Coventry's platform. Would you like that? And I said, yes, please. So me and Sean, he didn't know at the time, but um, I called Sean and said, are you busy? He said, no. So I said, well, do you fancy going to Bilston and have a look at the, the Compton they're installing? And he said, oh, yeah, I'd like to do that. I didn't tell him we were picking up a platform. He may have suspected something was up, though, when I arrived to pick him up in a van. <laughs> but, you know, you, you, you've just got to, you've got to help people make these decisions, haven't you? So we went down to Bilston, had a look at the organ and picked up the platform. This is what happened. Hello viewers, welcome back to the Mechanical Channel and actually welcome back to the latest instalment of the Rialto Returns. I know it's been ages but just bear with me on this. So the reason I haven't done anything uh, for a while is because I can't get into the console to physically do anything and I can't get around the back and it doesn't seem, um, it's, it's a bit difficult to get up from work um, like at 4 o'clock in the afternoon because I work nights and then do some wiring for two hours to push the console back, it seems silly. So, I'm on my way down to Bilston Town Hall today. A, to have a look at the Compton they're installing, which is uh, ex Gaumont Coventry, and to pick up a platform for the organ to sit on. So, yeah. And as you can see, we've chosen the best day to do it. Sunny British weather down the M6. Brilliant. Yay! It doesn't get better than that, does it? We'll see you later. Especially in a van. After Sean and I had battled through the great British weather and got to Bilson Town Hall, we got our first glimpse of the Compton. Now, I haven't been there in 12 months and I was very impressed to see the work that's been carried out. What you're seeing here, viewers, is the process by which the console is connected to the relay system. Cameron is sat in the relay room with a testing wire. He will take the testing wire and place it onto the tag board. 
Downstairs by the console, Damon is ready with an electrician screwdriver which will light up when he finds the correct wire. He can then label that wire and we know that the cable is in order. So then we can connect it to the keying on the console. And whilst all this was happening, Colin and Michael were painting the new box that would cover the console to protect it. Even Sean was excited. After we got the platform in the back of the van, which turned out to be a bit of an overkill, we headed back up the road. Again, braving the great British weather. Hello everyone, and as you can see, it's still wet. Yeah, it's still wet, it's getting wetter actually, but we have the platform. So the plan is now to get back, back this on the drive, take the platform off. Don't think the console is going to go on the platform tonight because, well it just won't because I haven't, but we haven't got the manpower to do it. Um, but that's that's another step closer, so you'll probably see a bit more later on if I film stuff. I, I don't know, I've been awake now for about 40 hours, I, can't, I can no longer function. Um, no! Grab the wheel! <laughs> Good night. Now it was at that point that my camera died, which is unbelievably annoying, but needless to say, we backed the van onto the drive, we took the platform out and we put the console on it, and it looks, it looks a lot better now I think, it's actually got bigger, and more importantly I can actually now get into it to do some work. Which leads me on to the next thing. Now in the last episode you may remember I was having a few problems with the pedal board. The pedal boards are crap. Yes, sorry about that. But anyway, I'm happy to say the pedal board is now back underneath. The pedals have been done. It's in a much better state now. So I'm quite happy with that. That's okay for the time being. Which leads me on to another problem which we've solved, but it has caused some headaches. Yes, the keyboards, or manuals if you want to be more correct. There has been a few problems here, but bear with me, I'll, I'll explain what's happened. In the last episode, I told you that we had the input boards installed in the console. That's true, they're there. However, when we'd wired all this up, or rather when I'd wired it up, we were getting strange conflicts on the computer system with the inputs. Now, it's either that the input board is slightly faulty because it's not new by the way these are well they were donated uh, by a very good friend and I suspect that at some point in storage they've got slightly damp which has caused uh, shorts and whatever I, I don't really know to be honest but it's not really working correctly and it's certainly not working reliably however what I actually suspect it is is my wiring which isn't the best you see it's not that I can't solder, I can solder. I find it very difficult to solder when these manuals are concerned because what you've got on the back are tiny little pins. They're, they're, they're very, very small. And what we decided to do was bridge some of them to get a better contact. However, I suspect it's the pitting on the bar on the back of the key and it's causing all sorts of weird conflicts like we're getting blips and notes are sticking on and then going off and things are like almost like they're re-hitting, you press a note down and it sort of goes duh, 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 duh. It's, it's quite odd, I'm not doing that again <laughs> before you ask. So I've come up with an executive decision, I know the purists out there are going to shout at me, I'm sorry but it, you know, it is my console, I've made this decision because it's easier for me and that's what we've done here. This is a MIDI keyboard. It's a 61 note MIDI keyboard which we've cut the case down and we've made a little shelf for it to fit in. And I have to say, when we tested it, it, it just works. It's just a much more reliable system. At the end of the day, this is for me and my friends to play and enjoy. I'd rather be able to sit down and play it than have to worry about contacts going over and wires pinging off and all that kind of things. You know, the, the, the actual touch on these keyboards isn't that different, they're semi-weighted like these, they're not wood core, okay they are plastic but they, they don't feel that bad and they, are, they, they work so I'm quite happy with that so again I'm really sorry if you have, if you, if you think that, that's, that this is, you know, this is some sort of blasphemy but it, it's the only way I could think of doing it on budget 
and to keep it working reliably. So there it is, that's what we've done. As you can see, the piston rails have come off, they're going to have to be moved and so we're now in the process of doing that. All the keys that have been taken out, I've still got them, they're going to be reused with other organs if we ever need them, they're going to be used as spurs, they're not original to the organ anyway because the original keys were <clears throat> were basically destroyed, they were damp, so then the, the all the tops had just come off, they, they were wrecked. So again, so basically all I've done is I've taken the spur key, the spur manuals back out and they're now back in storage, so that's what I've done. In other news, <laughs> ages ago, I know this is, I know this is petty, but I got one of these, right? Now this is a British Glockner switch gear, open, close, stop button, just like the one on Blackpool Tower. Yes, I know, I know, I know, don't shout at me, but there we go. But always wanted one. I got another one, there's two. This one, this one's in, this one's in better nick. So now I've got two. My plan, I want them to do something. I suspect I can get them to uh, switch on the computer or, or do something. I might even have it changing lights or something. I, there must be something I can do with them. But um, that's, the other, that's the other purchase I've made. The other thing you may have realized is the music rest is different. We had uh, the, the Compton one, the original one, is now the one that's on Bilson Town Hall. So you know, Gaumont Coventry. So it just looks better on that organ. I think it suits it better. Um, but this one was on the organ that was in Bilston, which is now in private ownership. Um, it's, a, it's a Wurlitzer style um, music rest. It's not, it's not the best. It's only made of cheap ply and it's quite thin, but it's, I, I actually think it looks rather good. So it's staying on there for the time being. I don't think it's not doing anybody any harm, is it? I think it looks okay. So basically, that is where we're at with the Rialto project. The next video on this, right, the next video on this, it will be making a sound. The stops might not work properly, but it'll make a sound, I, I promise you that. So stay tuned. I hope you've enjoyed the content. I'm, again, I'm very sorry it's taken me a long time to do this, but... There's just been that much going on. I've been in contact with so many people uh, arranging to go down, do videos and all these kind of things for the channel. So thank you for your patience. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you have, please like and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.